Hi, it's Jim from Pure Wave Audio. Today we're going to be looking at an addition to a house that is going to be a one room recording studio slash rehearsal room. So here we have uh, studio installation number two. Uh, you can see we have uh, dual walls. The outside is insulated to the uh, specifications of the city. And then the inside, uh, you can see there's a air gap. And then there's going to be special mineral fiber. Uh, for acoustic properties on the second wall, we have stringers to tighten stuff up at different uh, areas. But instead of doing like total random, we decided to do a pattern because it would be easier to actually cut the mineral fiber the same way every time. Um, and so we have the same thing going up on top. And uh, yeah, so we're getting ready to figure out where to put the, uh, the audio lines and where the lighting is going to go so it doesn't interfere with the acoustic panels and then of course we'll have vinyl barriers and rc8 channel and double gypsum and all that stuff um but it's coming uh it's coming together very well and uh i'm excited about this one all right so i wanted to give you that little preview of what we're doing what's nice about this build and i think you probably watched my other build that we're working on right now is this is a from the ground up addition. We have a house, we're putting on an addition. Um, so we get to choose. There's some design constraints, but unlike the other build where there's tons of design constraints and a lot of overbuild that the client wants, in this situation, there's simplicity. And simplicity is wanted because the client that I'm doing this for is not a full-time recording engineer. What he is is a guitar player that wants to have a one room studio that is a studio slash practice room. And 90% of the time it's going to be a practice room where all the guys come over and they jam and do their thing. And if he wants to hit the record button while he's doing that, or he wants to actually do some recording and play around and do different things, he has all that ability and he has nice high end, high end equipment and everything's going to work. And so what's great about this is besides a few design constraints of, you know, we're not making a multi-room studio and we can't spread everything out. We can design how we want it right from the get-go out of the ground. And so that is a pleasure working with something like this. So, so off the garage, we're building an addition to the house. Now that is a really nice, easy thing to do. However, in this situation, what you're looking at is where the driveway used to go wrap around the house and go to the garages. And so now this whole right area, which looks like a cliff coming off to the side, has to be backfilled in and the driveway has to be put around, back around to get around this building. So even though this looks like a simple build where we're just adding a box, that's true, but the logistics of the driveway is going to be a big thing that we have to change. So of course, I'm not involved in that process. So I don't have to worry about it myself. But uh, in this room, it has one door entrance from the outside, one window from the outside, and then a door that goes into the garage so he doesn't have to actually leave his house to walk into the studio in case it's raining or whatever. Now, on the inside of the room, you saw in the video how everything was uh, insulated on the outside. We haven't put the insulation yet in the uh, actual, I'll call acoustic walls, but this room not only has the room for the studio and the practice room and all that, we are putting in a humidified guitar room. Basically, it's a storage room for guitars and amps and things like that to where everything stays humidified because Arizona, we're in Arizona, and so it's very hot and dry and uh, all your guitars will crack and stuff. So he has a humidified room and literally it will hold, you know, tons like i don't know 20 30 something like that a lot of guitars all in cases you know it's not it's not like a showroom where it's going to be hanging it's just there'll be certain shelves there'll be the humidification and you know storage where you just have everything in its cases and it's not drying out 
sitting in the garage storage or something like that. So that's kind of an extra feature of this room. And because of that, you know, that was never going to be a big deal. But then I found out that the actual humidifier and the air conditioning motor system, if you will, the vent system, which you see hanging off the uh, inside of that closet, is in the closet. Now, the original way that I designed this room was that the whole perimeter of this room was going to be the isolation walls. And then that that wall just for the closet to go to the humidified room was just going to be an average wall with, you know, put some insulation in it, but it could be construction insulation, whatever, you know, the pink stuff, no big deal. Once I found out that, oh no, we're putting the motor in here and now we have hum and we have vibration and we have things like that. Well, okay, here's the first compromise and change, right? So I bought some more barrier so we could actually do official isolation walls where this door is going into the closet because we need to isolate any kind of air conditioning noise from the motors and stuff like that and the humidifier i don't I have no idea what the humidifier sounds like how much db it's radiating but now this is going to be isolation we're going to still use a somewhat standard door we'll probably use an outside door uh, that looks nice that goes in here so there's the magnets and stuff like that so we're not going to have like a four thousand dollar studio door isolating into the humidified room i think that's a little overkill uh, for this type of budget of of building right this is again not a 10 million dollar facility it's somebody's home and yes this is still going to cost 150 grand or whatever to you know build this out but it's not 10 million so we're going to put a, a door in there that should, you know, get rid of that issue. So you can see that we do have more space in this than in the other install because we're building it from scratch. We made the space to allow to do that. We're not doing a major two inch space. We're just doing a one inch space. But again, the mineral fiber is only two inches thick. And uh, between the extra inch between the walls and I think the two by fours end up being like three and three quarters or something like that. Uh, you got a few, you know, two inches of airspace that's going to happen there. So that's going to work out really well. Even though the mineral fiber is not in yet, we have all the boxes of the mineral fiber. Uh, we got something like I don't know, 25, 30 boxes sitting there that's going to go into the room and ready to go. Now, once we finish the walls, which in this case will be RC8 channel, We'll put in, uh, I think, like 5 8 gypsum drywall. Um, then we'll do the vinyl barrier. Then we'll do, I don't know, quarter inch or 3 8 uh, drywall. And then that will be the finished drywall. Then we're going to do the acoustics in this room. And we're going with, I believe it's blue and kind of a stained black wood. And so we got blue on the fabric, which we're using uh, cinema rounds. And then we're also using the Multifuser DC2 in a black color, which is kind of a super dark gray, if you will, but uh, might be more black in person compared to this picture. And we're kind of basing this off of this kind of design in the sense, if you look at the ceiling I'm mainly looking at here, we have the cinema rounds and then we have the DC2s. And, and then in the corners we have the... Um, SBEs, Super Bass Extreme, Bass Traps. And so we're kind of doing a design like that. So when we look at the wall that has the window in it, you could see that I'm able to get this nice little pattern going and we got the window in the center and then we got the SBEs in the corners, which I didn't color, they're just outlined. Um, and the SBEs are two foot by two foot, but you're putting them a 45 in the, in, in the corner of the room. So you need about 17 and a half to 18 inches coming off the corner of the wall on each side is where it actually ends up. Now, the other thing you'll notice is right to the left between the SBE and the, uh, and the blue um, cinema round panel is you'll see these little vertical things on each side towards the very outsides of the wall. Those are actually gonna be mounts to put up PA speakers. So next to the control room, which will, or, or the uh, control room console, which will be right below the window, which we're gonna put in some Focal Trio 11s, that will be the recording system. But for practice, we're not gonna use the Focal Trio 11s, we're gonna use some JBL uh, PA speakers. 
And even though it'll be all coming through the DAW system, we just thought it would be better to let those take the abuse for the live practice, let the trios be there for playback and, and recording and, you know, stuff like that. So those are going to be for mounting the speakers. And now we don't have a big, you know, three way, two inch, one and a half inch tube, you know, massive, you know, three foot by three foot by three foot area being taken up on the floor to hold these speakers up. They just hang on the wall. And since we're doing this from scratch, we just put as much wood as we want into the walls to be able to handle that weight to put those speakers on. So that's really nice. And then the last picture you're seeing here, and I'll show you back when we were looking at the ceiling in the video, as you can see that we have the air conditioning run to the four corners of the room. And so what you're looking at here is the little black squares are the air conditioning vents. And then we're using cinemas and DC twos around them and making kind of a pattern. And then we have more absorption over the control room console. And then we have a little more diffusion towards the back. And so it just gives you a nice simple layout that's similar to the other picture that we were talking about that kind of encompasses everything. And then to the right, you can see there's a little black hash, which is the doorway going into the humidification room. And uh, in there, not sure if we'll put any absorption. If we feel we need some, we might put absorption only. So a few extra cinema rounds to deaden off any kind of noise that's in that room. So it's not just bouncing around in there. I think there'll be so many guitar cases and stuff like that, that will almost be like diffusion in the room that it might not be an issue. But if we do, we might put four panels on the ceiling and that will absorb and take up some, some sound that's bouncing around in there. So that's kind of it for this uh, installation. We did get uh, the studio doors in, we did get the uh, Sterling Modular console in for this. And again, we're just waiting for the drywall to be done. So as soon as that happens, we'll give you some updates on this project. And this is going to be a really cool one. So multi-purpose room, but clean, simple, built up from the ground and uh, straight to the point. So I really like how this one's going. Until next time, have a great day. Building on top of the first course, the Studio Edge Pro audio recording series called Studio Concepts, Gear, and the Physics of Sound, Jim Pavet's next course, Planning a Studio, demystifies the planning process and teaches you how to get your studio designed and built. You see how to define your goals, plan your budget, and zero in on your musical philosophy so that your new studio will be in sync with your vision. It will also teach you about acoustics including absorption, diffusion, NRC ratings, and room modes. Once you have these in place, the Constructing and Fine-Tuning Your Studio course teaches you how to construct your studio, including floating floors, walls, and ceilings, and how to balance your acoustic treatment to get proper sounding rooms. Power, grounding, and HVAC systems are also discussed. A guest appearance from renowned acoustician Gavin Haverstick discusses the final results of a control room tuning and why having your rooms tuned is important. In the case study Home Studio Edition course, you get to join Jim Pavette as he consults with the owner and the construction team as they all work together to build a Home Studio Edition. Real interviews and consulting with the contractor and owner bring all the theory to life and reveal some trials and tribulations of building a studio. This five-star rated three-pack course is a necessity to having a properly built studio. Get it now at thestudioedge.com.